On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the 2020 Specialized Fuse Comp. This is a new version of the Specialized Fuse. The frame is totally redesigned for 2020, and it's the second generation of this bike. So we're gonna take a look at some of the features and design of this bike, find out if this is a nice upgrade, and what we think about the overall setup. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this into the future. So taking a look at this bike, the Specialized Fuse has been the more rowdy version of Specialized Hardtails in their lineup for the past few years. The Fuse originally started out as being solely a 27.5 plus version bike. And that means it was coming with 27.5 wheels or 650B and the tire size was a 3.0. Now that was in vogue for quite a while, but as traditional tire sizes have increased in volume, the new fuses, everything but the base model, are actually now 29ers. And they can do that because a 29 by 2.3 outside diameter tire is similar in height to a 650B by 3.0. Now this particular bike isn't running 2.3s. Modern 29ers are running 2.4s or 2.6s. So it bridges the gap of a plus size bike and what used to be a traditional tire size. Now the neat thing with this 2.6 is it's got super huge amount of volume and the aluminum frame can be manipulated so that it can still have some pretty short chain stays and aggressive geometry even with these larger wheels. Now, one of the advantages of a larger wheel is actually that the bike is gonna be able to roll over things a little bit better. So that means the rock that would be in front of that tire actually gets theoretically smaller the larger the wheel size. Now, something to keep in mind with that is what's the first thing that you see somebody with a Jeep do when they start to go off-roading? They get bigger tires and that's because off-road that's just going to help handle different obstacles and situations better and so by getting this 29 by 2.6 inch tire this bike is going to be able to roll over just about anything out on the trail which is where they want to place this is a, a good bike to be able to be either a beginner or even an intermediate trail rider that wants a hard tail that's super quick to respond but going to be super fun geo and speaking of that geometry, that's where we'll go to the head tube. So this particular bike you can see is reasonably slack. It's gonna be a 66 and a half degree head tube angle running 130 millimeters of fork travel. The seat tube is actually reasonably steep at 74 degrees, which is gonna help with climbing. So you're gonna have a nice slack head tube to keep the bike stable. Steep seat tube, which is gonna help uh, keep that front center balanced pretty well, be able to make the bike climb and uh, pretty maneuverable. And then in the back, this bike is actually now gonna be set up with what they call their single speed dropouts. So the single speed dropout is a sliding rear dropout. And you can actually see it's got 15 millimeters of travel that it could go forward or backwards on the dropout. And that allows you to both customize your geometry, but it also allows you to run a smaller 29er tire or even set this bike up 650 plus if that's what you want. Now the chain stay length in its longest position is 435 millimeters, which is pretty short. And in its shortest position, it's 420, which is road bike short, which is pretty cool. The other neat thing is you can see the actual way they've manipulated the frame to get that chain ring to still fit in is really incredible. You can see they've got this super narrow portion that still runs the internal cable routing to the back, which is a pretty slick setup. And then they've sweep the seat tube with a nice kink to it, which allows that tire to be able to be pulled way far forward. Now this frame is running specialized M4 premium aluminum. The M4 aluminum does have some smoothed out welds. It's all internal cable routing. I mean, even down to that junction, which is just gorgeous to see everything go through. It makes for a really nice looking bike, but it means that the tubing is gonna be fully manipulated. So it's gonna be tapered as well as uh, the shapes have been manipulated to fit the bike really well. It's gonna run an 
inch and an eighth to inch and a half tapered head tube and a 34.9 seat post, which is pretty neat because that's a larger seat post diameter. They do that because the dropper posts you can put in here, the range gets a lot wider. You can run adapters with smaller dropper posts or Specialize is pushing towards the future for a larger diameter seat post on those droppers, which allows them to make a stronger and stiffer dropper post. Speaking of the dropper though, what comes with the bike is a 34.9 Trans X dropper seat post. This is gonna have 100 millimeters of seat post travel in a size extra small or small. A size medium, it's gonna have 120. And then a large or an extra large like this bike, it's gonna have 150 millimeters of seat post travel. The drivetrain on this bike is really sweet. For the money here, you've got SRAM SX Eagle. So that means it's gonna run an 11 to 50 tooth, 12 speed rear cassette. It's got this XS Eagle wide range Eagle derailleur up front. You're running an SX crank set here. This is forged aluminum arms running a SRAM 30 tooth Eagle chain ring. This is a narrow wide chain ring operating on a power spline SRAM threaded bottom bracket. So it's a cartridge bottom bracket inside of the threaded frame. To control the front end of the bike, this is running RockShox Recon RL shock. So this RL shock is gonna have adjustable compression. So open to almost totally locked out. It's gonna be running an air adjustable front air spring, which means you're gonna be able to set this up to your weight and riding style. It's got that nice black stanchions on the fork which makes for a really nice look. And it's gonna be reasonably stiff with 32 millimeter stanchions, and of course have rebound adjust. For brakes, this is gonna be stopping using SRAM level hydraulic brakes. Depending on the bike size, it's gonna run either a 200 or a 180 up front. And then in back on the six bolt hubs, it's running either a 180 or 160 millimeter rotor. But you're gonna have nice big rotor sizes to help slow this bike down. Keeping control, we talked about this a little bit, but in the back, it's the Purgatory 29 by 2.6. This particular tire is gonna be their grid casing. It's tubeless ready, of course, and uh, it runs their Gription compound, which makes for a really sticky, uh, but still fast rolling tire. And up front, they make it even more aggressive by running this specialized Butcher grid trail. So this is gonna be a 2.6 as well with a much wider space knobs, a little bit more aggressive up front. And they do a more aggressive tire up front than the back to make the front end bite and the back be a little bit looser, which kind of enhances the way that the bike feels and, uh, and how much fun it is to ride. Now the wheel set that's on this bike, that's running Specialized own stout rims. These rims are gonna be a 29 millimeter internal width. They're running 28 spokes. They are tubeless ready, so the wheels and tires are tubeless ready. Up front, it runs a Boost 15 by 110 front through axle. And then in the back on that sliding rear dropout, it's gonna be running a 12 by 148 rear through axle. So this bike is pretty stacked straight out of the box, but it also makes for a pretty nice place to upgrade from should you wanna make a really killer hardtail mountain bike. So now that we've taken a look at some of the features and designs of this specialized fuse, let's go ahead and find out what this bike weighs. The actual weight of the Fuse Comp 29 in an extra large comes in at 32.89 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the 2020 Specialized Fuse Comp. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this brand new 29er version of the Fuse. While you're at it, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as drop me a thumbs up. It really lets me know that you enjoyed the video.